and Riri needed to go sing for Dr. Martin Luther King, there was nothing that was going to stand in between her and Dr. King. Okay? Oh, uh, gee! Remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not a part of our Bella Book Club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on YouTube and be privy to all the shenanigans before everybody else gets it for a small fee of five dollars a month now let's get into david ritz the life of aretha franklin respect but anyway where we left off we learned that pimping and drugging was synonymous with the r b circuit okay and that the frankly children was not exempt Okay, now Riri was also mad at James Hammond, one of the producers that she was working with round there to Columbia, because she thought that James Hammond was the reason as to why her sister Irma had signed on to Epic, a sister company or a subsidiary of Columbia. Okay, when in actuality, it wasn't John Hammond who suggested that Irma sign on, it was the Pappy. C.L. Smoothie was the reason as to why Irma got a contract over there. And when Riri went to her pappy and said, I don't understand why she got to be on the same label, the label as me, C.L. Smoothie said, shut the fuck up, Riri. So anyway, Irma said that it was during the 1960s that she would play the uptown clubs while Riri would play the downtown clubs. They would sometimes cross each other sometimes right but irma knew her sister was a bitch and she just you know tried to stay away from her as much as possible because she said that her sister had a coldness about her that uh gave her chills so she just stayed away from the bitch that's how them aries women are okay when they pissed off at you stay the fuck away from them okay and and you're welcome okay 1962 Riri was playing in a local jazz club, okay? Irma and Cecil both attended, okay? Not because Riri invited Irma, but because Irma decided to go meet her brother, who was invited by Riri, who was playing on a bill with Theonius Theolius Monk. Theolius Monk was one of Cecil's favorite uh, jazz musicians right riri again in her feelings say to cecil cecil it seemed like you more happy to see uh theolius than your sister cecil knowing who his sister was girl i like you both okay you my sister but you know that i like theolius the no man so moving forward she's working with a producer by the name of bob mercer or mercy okay because she hated Hammond, Mercy was the person that the record company hooked her up with, okay? Mercy contributed three albums to Frankly, Franklin's career. The three albums was The Tender, The Moving, The Swinging, Aretha Franklin in 1962, Laughing on the Outside in 1963, and Unforgettable, the tribute to Dinah Washington in 1964. So in May 1962, she participated in the Newport Jazz Festival, okay? Later that month, Martin Luther King was jailed in Albany, Georgia for participating in a demonstration. The purpose of this is to show you or to co-relate the civil rights movement with Aretha's career, okay? 
why Aretha is trying to grow musically, the civil rights movement, movement is rotating around her. So in August, the same year of 1962, Aretha Franklin appeared on American Bandstand for the second time and performed Try A Little Tenderness and a song called Don't Cry Baby. Neither one were hips, okay? But I guess Teddy Whitey was able to get her on American Bandstand. And we all know that is a big deal when Aretha Franklin is on the American Bandstand, okay? Now, it's a big deal for her to be over there to the Soul Train, but when you want that crossover, you got to get on the bandstand, okay? Rest in peace, Dickety Clarkety. So, okay. on September 27th, that same year, the United States Department of Justice filed a suit to end public segregation. Three days later, Mississippi Governor Ross Barnett, Barnett blocked James Meredith from enrolling at the State University. So as America was turning, Aretha Franklin's career was turning, okay? She was turning and changing so much that she decided to get that goddamn Joe King, the lady that uh, Riri father wanted her to stay with the walking papers, okay? It didn't matter because her husband, Teddy Pimpy, said, get rid of the bitch. Now, because Teddy Pimpy ain't cared nothing about no legal suits or nothing like that, she just ca he just came in and said, bitch, you fired, okay? Uh, Joe was like, uh, no, bruh, that's not how this work. Uh, I'm a white woman. I don't give a fuck, Joe King. What I said is you got to go. Next minute you know Jet Magazine is printing something to say that Joe King... The lady, ex-manager, is suing the fuck out of Aretha because her husband, Teddy Pimpy, threw me out on my ass. David Ritz, the author of this book, asked Irma why did Riri allow Ted White to just come in and just take over and change everything, okay? And I'm going to surmise, basically, what Irma said. Irma said that Aretha was used to her father running her life. And when her father could no longer do it, she invited a new man in to run her life, Teddy Pimpity Whitey. So in 1963, on Hastings Streets, where uh, the bars, the clubs, and his church once stood, C.L. Smoove is watching them tear the block down, okay? Now, he ain't too worried because he know he gonna get him a whole new place for his congregation. But in the meanwhile, the congre congregation has found temporary relief at temporary places, okay? And it worked well for C.L. Smooth because that gave him time to be on the road more. He was very sought after as guest or as a spiritual guest speaker at many churches. And then that way he could um, also help with the civil rights movement, movement with Martin Luther King. It also gave him the time to be the founding president of the Metropolitan Civil League of Legal Action. So now remember I told you that, you know, the congregations was dispersed temporarily. Okay, they went to other churches temporarily, but you know they had to get back to that CL's movie. So on March 10th, he opened the doors to the new New Bethel Church down there to Linwood in Philadelphia. I ain't never been to Detroit, so I don't know where the hell that is. You Detroit people, I'm sure y'all know. So by May, CL Smooth, Clarence, LaVon Franklin, okay, was in the final stages of formulating his plan to hold a massive freedom march in Detroit with his close friend, Dr. King, as the speaker, okay? On May 27th, Mahalia Jackson sponsored a fundraising rally for Dr. King, okay? It was his Southern Christian Leadership Conference, okay, at McCormick Place in Chicago. The Freedom Fund Festival featured Al Hibber, Mayor Richard Daly, Dick Gregory, Eartha Kitt, and Aretha Franklin. Now, like I said, Ted was in charge of everything now, okay? But when Riri needed to go sing for Dr. Martin Luther King, there was nothing that was going to stand in between her and Dr. King, okay? Oh, gee! C.L. Smooth 
instilled in her and the children a strong obligation to back Dr. Martin Luther King. When the king calls, you better run, okay? And that's something that she held steadfast to. No, Teddy Whitey, Pimpy. No, Pimpy Whitey, Teddy. No, no, no. It wasn't a problem until it was a problem. And what happened was it was a problem. So one day C.L. Smooth calls Riri and say, Riri, Dr. King needs you to sing for him. No problem, Daddy. Even though you ain't, I ain't heard from your ass, you ain't fucking with me, I had to get this whole pimp. Rita turns to Teddy. Teddy, listen, the king needs me, okay? I'm going to go sing for him. You know, Daddy called. You know, I just, I got to do what I got to do, Teddy, okay? Ted turned around and said, answer no, Riri. You need to sing. We got to make money out here, okay? You got an engagement at this club. Ah, ah, ah. Riri said, Teddy, Dr. King needs me more. Teddy don't give a fuck. Now it's a struggle. Now it's a power struggle between Teddy and the civil rights movement. Okay, so typically Ted really doesn't care. He never gets in the way of Riri and the civil rights movements or whatever it is she chooses to participate in when it comes down to the civil rights movement, right? But this time it was a concern because now he's trying to exercise his power and like Riri told him, you're not gonna stand in the way of me helping the civil rights movement, okay? Ted didn't turn it into something else. While he's doing that, Riri getting in her head, oh, this nigga got me fucked up. He got me fucked up. If the whole world is incorporated into the civil rights movement, it is important. We don't need the money, Teddy. What are you talking about? We don't need the money. Just get that bitch that sold her pussy the last time. Moving on, Etta James gives Aretha Franklin her accolades for performing the song Skylark. I don't know who sang it originally, but if you notice, Aretha loves to do covers of songs. Even when people say, no, you can't do it, your voice is too strong, like the Dionne Ward songs. Uh, He's the kind of guy in the top. But anyway, she loves to cover songs because she want to know if she can do it better. So, y'all, when Aretha Franklin was covering your song, she ain't doing it because she respects you. She doing it because she knows she can do it better. Now, on Saturday, June 23rd, 1963, 10 days after Aretha's final session for Laughing on the Outside, over 100,000 people took to the streets of Detroit in the Freedom March led by Reverend C.L. Smoove and Martin Luther King. The march ended at Cobb Hall where C.L. had arranged for Dr. King to speak. Before the address, though, there were uh, several entertainers, okay? There was a jazz pianist by the name of Ramsey Lewis. Remember when y'all got in my neck because I didn't know who Ramsey Lewis was when I was doing that Stacey Lattisaw, uh unsung review? I know who he is now, y'all, okay? So anyway, uh, C.L. Smooth's close friends, uh, the Queen of Blues, Dinah Washington, jazz organist, Jimmy McGriff, The Four Tops, and Irma Franklin, okay? Now, remember I told you that Riri was old petty bitch? Because Irma was there, she wasn't going to be there. In September, Aretha went back into the Columbia Studios in New York where she met a Mr. Bobby Scott, okay? And on November 22nd, 1963, Aretha is seven months pregnant with her third child, and JFK has just been assassinated. Irma says that although we know that Teddy White was a strong, possessive, and intimidating man, when the world felt all wrong for Riri, she always went back home to her father. Like I said, Teddy Whitey is starting to get on her goddamn nerves now, 
Okay? So, I want to go back to my original parent. Jail Smoothie. He treat me better than you, Teddy. He treat me better. So, a month later, another tragedy happened. Miss Dinah Washington died of an overdose. It shook the Franklin family. At a very young age, uh, young Riri was entertaining all these celebrities, including Dinah Washington and her then boyfriend, Teddy Whitey Pimpy, okay, now Aretha's husband. And, uh, you know, she's been a fixed figure, figure. And now one of her boyfriends is Aretha Franklin's husband. That shit is weird to me. At any rate, Aretha's brother Cecil remembers that when Riri and Taya got the news, they rushed home to Detroit, okay? Riri was hurt. That goddamn Ted was like, ding dong, the queen is gone. All hail Queen Aretha. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.